Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar session. My name is Aisha al IT Planning and Governance Senior Manager in Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. And it's a privilege to have you all following us today. Our topic today will be about delivering carbon neutrality for the FIFA World, Club, World Cup Qatar 2022 in collaboration with the sustainability team of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. We have an esteemed lineup of guests who will appear on today's panel to highlight the recent development and actions towards carbon neutrality. I have read many times in the news about this World Cup will be carbon neutral. But what is carbon neutral and why are we doing it? What is FIFA doing about this? What is the state of Qatar doing for climate change and Paris Agreement? You will get all the answers in this webinar. If something is not answered, please reach out uh, to us and type it in the Q&A box. Qatar has committed a carbon neutral World Cup during the bid for FIFA World, uh, World Cup 2022. With sustainability at the heart of the preparations for FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy is on track to achieve its commitment to deliver the first ever carbon neutral FIFA World Cup and leave a legacy of climate action for Qatar and the region. Carbon neutrality is the achievement of net zero carbon emissions. This is normally achieved by reducing emission as much as possible before balancing the remaining emissions with uh, the purchase of carbon credits. So let me take you through some session ground rules. Uh, if you want to follow the session in Arabic, there's an interpretation um, option uh, only available for attendees using the Zoom application on their uh, desktop or laptop or mobile devices. Uh, please note to select French and you will be connected to the Arabic audio channel. Uh, for any questions, please use the Q&A uh, box to post your questions and queries for our speakers to respond and we will pick up the questions and ask it to uh, the panelists to answer. So let's go ahead and introduce you to our speakers today. Joining me from SC is Bedur El Mir. Bedur is Sustainability and Environment Senior Manager. We also have with us uh, Maryam El Ali, Project Manager for Siraj Power Project in Kahrama. Federico Adieche, Head of Diversity in FIFA. Abdel Hadi El Mari, Director of Sustainability and Climate Change Department, Ministry of Municipality and Environment. So without further ado, let me hand over the mic to Bedur El Mir to start her panel, her, her section in the panel. Bedur to you. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. First of all, and on behalf of the Supreme Committee, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. As uh, you all are aware, climate change is one of the uh, biggest risks in our uh, time. In the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, we recognize the impact of the climate change, and we started working on this area way before Bitbook was finalized. Carbon neutral commitment was one of uh, our promises to FIFA way back in 2010. We've been uh, working with FIFA on sustainability since eight years now. Uh, in this webinar, you will uh, listen to my colleague uh, Federico, who will uh, provide more focus on the sustainability efforts. Earlier this year, we have published the first ever joint sustainability strategy with uh, FIFA and uh, Q22, uh, with, and Q22, Qatar 22. Uh, so for uh, our sustainability strategy, uh, as shown, uh, we are having five pillars and more than 70 uh, initiatives. Our strategy is aligned with uh, the Qatar National uh, Vision 2030, and it is contributing with uh, the United Nations SDG Sustainability Development Goals. I will take you through the pillars very quickly before I explain uh, the carbon neutrality plans for the FIFA World Cup. Next slide, please. So the five pillars as shown uh, on this slide, the first one is the social, where we uh, will take care of uh, accessibility, cultural understanding, uh, human rights, etc. The second pillar is the uh, human pillar. And uh, you might have already heard uh, uh, about our uh, worker welfare program. 
which has made a tremendous improvement in the life of the workers living and uh, working in Qatar. Uh, the third pillar is the governance pillar. Uh, we have recently launched the sustainability sourcing code, which will be applicable for all our procurements. The fourth pillar is the economic pillar. We are promoting uh, local businesses and creating legacy in the country and in the region. The fifth and the last pillar, which I personally like the most, uh, is the environmental pillar. And uh, one of the initiatives is the greenhouse uh, gases emissions. Under this initiative, we uh, are making FIFA World Cup 2022 carbon neutral. Next slide, please. So uh, first, let me explain uh, to you what is carbon neutrality for some of you who may not be aware about it. Carbon neutrality refers to achieving net zero carbon, as Asha mentioned earlier, zero carbon dioxide emissions by balancing the carbon dioxide emissions uh, with removals and uh, offsets. Uh, as I told you during the start of my presentation that uh, the SC uh, is monitoring uh, emissions from the starting from the starting of uh, 2011. Uh, so as you can see on the right uh, on the diagram, we are counting our carbon emissions from uh, 2011 and we have uh, contracted some uh, offsets project which uh, are reducing carbon emissions from 2016 as shown in the graph uh, by the orange color. Uh, the green line is uh, the net balances of carbon uh, emissions. Inshallah, in 2022, total offset will be more uh, than uh, estimated carbon emissions, and therefore the World Cup will be carbon neutral before kickoff. Next slide, please, uh, So to achieve the carbon neutrality event for this World Cup, we have uh, adopted five uh, step model, uh, which is uh, raising awareness and uh, carbon inventory, a mitigation project, offset project, and carbon legacy. Next, uh, Vasco, please. So you might be thinking that Qatar is uh, cooling all the stadiums will not be sustainable or it will uh, emit a lot of carbon emissions. I would like to let you know that this uh, cooling is uh, making a year around use of stadiums and this is very efficient. Furthermore, World Cup is uh, going to be inshallah in winter and uh, we may not need to use uh, cooling at all. Uh, I personally invite you all to visit Qatar and experience the weather and the football uh, during the tournament. Uh, the SC is implementing best practices during the stadium construction. We have efficient design for lower energy and water consumption. Uh, we reused and recycled water and materials. Uh, and as it was committed earlier many times that all of our stadiums are following the sustainable certification, G uh, certification GSAS which uh, helps in uh, the emission reduction during construction plus the operation, uh, as well as uh, other mitigation projects, such as the, use, the use of the renewable energy. Uh, we have highly efficient generators, sustainable procurement, and etc. My colleague Federico will uh, touch on uh, the estimated carbon emissions for the FIFA World Cup 2022. Uh, the last step of our plan, or let me say the fourth step of our plan, is to, to offset. Uh, offset refers to the emission reduction that have uh, been achieved outside the boundary. The remaining carbon emission will be offset by good quality projects. Uh, one of the projects is the Siraj Power uh, with 700 megawatt solar photovoltaic uh, project. Maryam uh, Al Ali uh, will be providing more details on that. Uh, the preferred projects are uh, Qatar-based project, and uh, we will have uh, that will leave uh, emissions re reduction legacy after the World Cup uh, in the host country. Uh, Mr. Abdel Hadi Murray will provide more details about actions of the state of Qatar related to the climate change and Paris Agreement, 
um, the SC supported establishment of uh, Global Carbon Council, GCC. Uh, the SC also is continu continuously looking for high quality emission reduction projects in Qatar. So I would encourage you to reach uh, to us if you have uh, any good quality emission reduction projects in Qatar. Uh, please let us know. And that's it for today. At the end, I wish you all the best uh, luck and please stay uh, safe and healthy. I will hand it over now to uh, Aisha for any questions. Thank you, Bidur. That was very impressive. Thank you for sharing all this information. So my first question to you is, um, and I would like to remind our attendees, you can post your questions in the Q&A box and I'll ask them to Bidur. So my first question to you, Bidur, is how confident are you that this World Cup will be carbon neutral? Alhamdulillah, we have taken massive uh, leaps toward uh, delivering that, and we are, uh, inshallah, certain that uh, we will be able to achieve uh, this for the tournament. We believe that our commitment to uh, sustainability will help us in achieving this target as uh, it helped us uh, with many targets in the past. Perfect. And what are the activities that you have implemented to mitigate your uh, carbon emissions by so far? Um, creating efficient and environmentally friendly uh, building play a massive role in the amount of emission we have managed to mitigate. We have uh, managed that by reducing our uh, overall energy demand and um, creating uh, green spaces all around the stadium precincts, mm -hmm. uh, reducing air travel as well by ensuring that the tournament is uh, compact. Also managed to reduce the load as uh, air travel is considered to be uh, one of the highest carbon producers. Yes. Uh, we ensured uh, that more sustainable ways of uh, travel uh, are in place by integrating all the rail services into our stadiums. And uh, we have created uh, plans uh, for individuals that, uh, and encourage them to use the cycling as a method of travel as well. Yes, yes. So with the World Cup being a massive national project, um, how can stakeholders in Qatar help you achieving your goal? Although we manage uh, the World Cup activities, we rely heavily on uh, the participation of uh, national stakeholders to develop most of our plans for the country with the various areas of collaboration. That was the same approach we took for Qatar as we met with various uh, stakeholders. We first started by creating workshops that started back in uh, 2017 and uh, until 2019. The reason of uh, the workshops were uh, is to raise uh, uh, carbon awareness. We've also uh, sponsored events such as uh, GORT Summit and the QGBC Sustainability Week that uh, discussed various uh, carbon-related topic, topics. Um, we also did uh, our role in uh, participating in uh, different events that talked about the various pro uh, practices we uh, did uh, leading to our carbon neutrality effort efforts. Thank you so much, Badur. Um, Thank you. So looking into the questions from the audience. So I, I can see one of the here. questions. Yes. Have you if considered you... greenhouse gas emissions yeah. generated from construction activities pre-2022? Yes. yes, this is the plan. We mm -hmm. are now to consider all the greenhouse gas emissions uh, for uh, constructing our stadiums. Okay. I think uh, we have... Um, you can pick up one more question if you would like, Budur, or I can move to the next uh, guest for the sake of time. I move to the other. Yes, because uh, yes. we're running short on the time here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Budur. So moving on to my next guest, Maryam Al Ali. Uh, she is the project manager for the Siraj power station, and uh, in Kahrama. Uh, it's a very exciting project to hear about, and I can't wait for uh, you all to have a look at it, and we'll ask her questions afterward. Go ahead, Miriam. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Asha. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's actually my pleasure to be here uh, with you in this webinar. Uh, 
to speak about one of the projects that we at Kahrama have been planning and working on for the last three years. Uh, it's a major contribution to the environment and also to the economy of Qatar, and of course to the uh, tournament uh, of uh, World Cup 2022. Uh, it's Rajwan Solar Plant. Uh, you might have heard of it uh, being called Al Kharsaha. It's the same, basically same plant, uh, but um, uh, the official name is Siraj One. Uh, I have a couple of slides. Uh, first, I'll go through the facts of the project, and then I will uh, uh, I will discuss the benefits, expected benefit to the nations. So, regarding the plant, uh, first of all, it's one of the largest uh, solar power plants in the region and uh, the first of its kind and size uh, in the country. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's uh, utilizing PV technology, which uh, converts uh, solar radiation to electrical energy. Uh, and it's one of the clean and renewable energy uh, technologies for electricity generation. The total capacity of the plant is 700 megawatts of AC power, uh, which represents 10% uh, of the peak demand for electricity in the country. Currently, our peak is around 8,600 uh, megawatts. According to the plan uh, 350, half of the capacity is a plan to be connected to the grid on August 2021. And uh, the commercial operation of the full capacity will start, inshallah, in April 2022, which means before the uh, World Cup 2022. Uh, the plant is located in uh, Kharsa'a area on a site of uh, 10 square kilometer. And uh, as you can see in the, uh, on the map, it's in the western part of the country. Uh, the, the site was allocated based on, uh, on solar radiation. Uh, regarding technology, uh, we are using photovoltaic solar cells or solar, pa solar panels. We are also using uh, bifacial panels, which absorbs uh, solar radiation from both sides of the panels. Uh, on site, we will have around uh, let, just less than uh, 2 million panels uh, with also single access trackers, which will track the sunlight uh, directions to maximize the energy production from the site. Uh, the project is an IPP project, independent uh, power production project, and it's financed through non-recourse financing. Uh, there is a special uh, project company established uh, to own, uh, to build, own, and operate uh, the plant for 25 years, and then uh, transfer uh, the plant back to Kahrama ownership. The total uh, development cost of the project is 1.7 uh, billion Qatar reals. Uh, as I said, Saraj One is the project company. Uh, it will be owned uh, by 60% for the strategic national investor in the, in the, in the project, which is Siraj Energy, and 40% uh, for the uh, international uh, developer, which is the consortium of uh, Marubini Corporation, Japanese uh, company, and uh, Total Solar International, a French company. Uh, since 2015-2016, the, uh, the solar PV market has evolved and experienced a breakthrough in, uh, in, the, in both price and efficiency, uh, which, um, which led people to go for that technology. Uh, we at Kahrama, we, we were observing the market and uh, we were waiting until that uh, good time to invest in this technology. And uh, due to that mar uh, market development and also the management of the project, Alhamdulillah, we were able to achieve uh, one of the best and lowest prices for this type of project. Uh, we have uh, achieved a levelized cost of electricity of 1.44 uh, US cents per kilowatt hours, which is equivalent to 5.2 uh, dirhams per kilowatt hour. Uh, regarding the uh, benefits of the project, uh, as I said, uh, uh, we, we, we were able to achieve uh, a very uh, low price that is even not, uh, not, not, not even um, a great parity, but, but also less than that. So it was a very competitive uh, generation price compared to our uh, co conventional generation. Um, we have an opportunity, uh, the project acted as a fuel replacement or fuel switching. So the generated solar energy will replace that will replace part of energy that's currently generated using uh, natural gas. And thus will reduce the gas consumption in the country and also will uh, provide uh, opportunity for that extra amount of saved gas to be exported outside. Uh, and uh, by, next slide, please. 
and uh, by adding yeah by adding uh, solar energy to the uh, to the mix we are um, we are not we are diversifying the energy mix and reducing the gas dependency currently we are 100% depending on gas generation uh, but when we add the, the solar energy to the mix we are reducing that this dependency this not all, only have a, like an economic or environmental benefit but also a strategic target or strategic benefit to secure the uh, supply of power uh, and uh, in addition solar energy like as you all know it's a green energy with zero, zero carbon emission uh, because there is no fossil fuel burning uh, involved in the process so converting part of that demand of or electricity demand uh, from 100% natural gas to, to solar energy will eventually reduce the amount of carbon emitted to the atmosphere and will uh, contribute to uh, re reducing the gas emissions. This will in turn play a major contribution to the fulfillment of uh, Qatar commitment toward uh, carbon neutral FIFA World Cup. Uh, according to our estimation, uh, and based on the uh, estimated uh, annual energy production of the plant, we will be able to reduce around 1 uh, million tons of CO2 every year. So over the project lifetime, it will uh, be around 26 million tons of carbon emissions. Uh, that's it. I will be happy to uh, receive your questions. Thank you so much, Miriam. This was very exciting to listen to. Um, so this is the first large scale solar power project in Qatar. Can we expect to see more of these types of projects in the future? Yeah, solar energy and renewable energy in general are the future of the power sector, as you know. And for sure, uh, such projects are um, always under study. Uh, and the field is uh, drastically evolving. So once proven viable, both uh, economically and technically, uh, we will be glad to have uh, more of these projects. In fact, Perfect. in Karama, currently we are studying a couple of them. Perfect. So I have a question from uh, one of the attendees, uh, a comment, congratulations to Kahrama on the Siraj One project. Is it possible for members of public or industry sector companies to visit the project site at some point? Uh, not, at, no, not at that current uh, point, but uh, maybe later in the future. Okay. Currently Thank construction. So uh, yeah. It's under construction right now, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for now, I don't think there is a possibility, but probably in the future. So thank you so much, Miriam. Um, so I'm moving on to my next guest for the sake of time. Um, um, I have with me uh, today as well, uh, Federico Adieke. And I'm sorry, I, I, uh, the, the designation that I mentioned at the beginning was uh, I want to correct that now, is Head of Sustainability and Environment. So, Federico, thank you so much for being with us today. And my first question to you is, where do you see the sports and climate change discussion leading to in the future, let's say 10 years from now? Well, thank you, Aisha. And first, first of all, let me, uh, let me uh, wish a good afternoon to everyone and, and thank uh, Jusuri Institute and the Supreme Committee for this invitation to join uh, this panel. Um, and to answer your question, I hope uh, that uh, in 10 years, uh, the, the convergence will be leading to less discussion and more action. If you ask me the time uh, for talking and debating is running out, we know what needs to be done and it's time to do it. It is just vital, not just for our planet, but also for sport itself. So uh, with a, a little bit of optimism, I, I see that more alignment between sports and climate action uh, will exist uh, more alignment than today and, and definitely across the board in sports. At the moment, however, there is a still uh, a big gap uh, to be covered in order for the entire sports uh, sector to seriously address the clim uh, climate change and the climate urgency. And, and for every actor in sports to play its part, we must act with urgency. Uh, we at FIFA, and Boudou was explaining a little bit of, of the work that we do together in connection with the uh, uh, with the World Cup uh, uh, Qatar 2022, but also other sport, uh, large sports organizations believe uh, that we have a leading role to play in this uh, effort of the world of sports contributing to climate action. Uh, the popularity of our sports, the size of our events, our operations, and the resources that we generate with our sport 
come along with a heightened responsibility towards addressing our impact in first place and showing a positive example at the same time. So we do understand what the impact uh, of uh, our sport is, uh, what uh, our events and operations uh, have an impact, very big impact as well on the climate. And we're able to analyze it and quantify it. And we know what our options are for measuring, avoiding, reducing, uh, replacing, compensating, and, and reporting about uh, um, uh, carbon, um, our carbon emissions. So we simply need the entire world of sports to demonstrate political will. Uh, that's key. Uh, we need to acknowledge responsibility and we need to adopt those mechanisms, uh, which I mentioned before, which are probably not going to be too different in 10 years from now. So the, there are frameworks that are uh, in a simple manner, they guide uh, such efforts of FIFA and other actors in the world of sports. The UNFCCC Sports for Climate Action framework is one of them. Uh, FIFA is a, a signatory of, the, um, of uh, the, uh, the framework, and it was the first sport organization globally to join the UNFCCC Climate Neutral Now initiative back in 2016. We have been, as part of that effort, measuring, reducing and offsetting the carbon emissions linked to FIFA tournaments and uh, as specified by the UN Climate uh, Change Secretariat since 2009. So the goals are very clear, to cut our emissions by half, by 2030 to become mm -hmm. uh, net zero emissions by 2050 and for our FIFA World Cups to continue to be carbon neutral. And mm -hmm. at the same time, to use the power of our game and our events to promote greater uh, environmental responsibility. I believe, and I say it once again, it is vital, not just for the planet, but also for sport, that sports organizations show uh, climate leadership, that take, they take responsibility for uh, the, cl the climate footprint and they contribute to stepping up climate action in sport and also beyond sport. Thank you, Federico. So my next question would be, where do you look for inspiration in this field? Uh, well, uh, I take his inspiration, I would say, perhaps from the, the global youth climate movement, for example, uh, uh, from the, the Fridays for Future, uh, from Greta Thunberg, from my daughters. Uh, but also in the exemplary work that, that other organizations, both in sport and, and beyond, are delivering to tackle the climate emergency, becoming best practice in some case for our industry and, and beyond. And I can perhaps give you a couple of examples in, in football, uh, uh, one ranging from uh, the Forest Green Rovers, uh, a team in the English League Two, considered the greenest club in the world, uh, uh, a club which is in its continuous path to reducing its carbon footprint to renewable uh, technologies and to applying innovative, uh, sustainable approaches. Uh, but also the other, the, 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 the other end of the, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the line, the, uh, in terms of the size, the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Uh, this is the largest single sport event on earth with a significant impact on society, the economy and the environment. Uh, an event which is not only going to be carbon neutral, but that is going to help leave a legacy for climate action in Qatar and the region. Uh, we have a number of sustainable initiatives and, and a few were mentioned before by, by Boudour uh, and by Marian uh, in, in terms of aim, aiming at reducing the event's carbon footprint, which is of 3.6 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, uh, including around transportation of fans, food, waste management, uh, carbon management, uh, which are integral part of our sustainability strategy, uh, which is the one guiding our work uh, together with the host country. Uh, and a commitment to offsetting the unavoidable remaining uh, carbon emissions has also been at the origin of other initiatives in Qatar. I could mention the Qatar's Global uh, Carbon Council, an initiative by board that is unique in the region and counts as well with the support of the Ministry of Municipalities and Environment, which I would like to thank as well for their leading uh, role in, uh, in addressing and pushing this agenda for uh, climate action in Qatar. Uh, and this uh, um, GCC uh, initiative, uh, together with the, uh, the efforts of, uh, of the Siraj project and the cooperation between FIFA and the, uh, the Supreme Committee uh, for Delivery and Legacy will be instrumental in the FIFA World Cup's pledge to carbon neutrality. I, I sincerely hope as well, now if you ask me about the where I get inspiration, I hope as well that uh, the, the sustainability strategy of this event, which is the result of that, a great collaboration 
one which I have never seen before in my in my long history at FIFA and working with different World Cups. Uh, the the ex excellent collaboration between FIFA, Q22, and the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy is in itself uh, a source of inspiration to other sports actors and that it will deliver to its promise and to my conviction that success and sustainability are indivisible concepts. Amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Federico. So with the real impacts of climate change uh, being seen across the globe with uh, FIFA having a global membership, can you please discuss the impact on the game itself? Uh, we have seen some uh, very serious reports from some winter sports thinking that they may not be able to compete in the same way in the future due to changes in the climate. Well, yeah, definitely uh, uh, the climate change is, is affecting and will continue to affect uh, uh, our, our game, uh, even in more extreme ways that we have seen so far. There are heat waves, there's heavy rainfalls, uh, there's extreme weather events that are reducing actually the time that football can be played outdoors. Uh, they're making playing outside less attractive, in some cases even dangerous to the health of children and young people. Uh, there are more violence of thunderstorms, so ty typhoons, uh, which are damaging football infrastructure, reducing the availability of facilities around the world. There are droughts, there are, there are higher uh, rainfall, longer cold spells and sea level rise, uh, which are gradually impacting as well playing surfaces and other football facilities uh, and adding further stress to, the, to the, this infrastructure, this vital infrastructure, which is required to train and play football at different levels, uh, not just at the professional one, but also at the grassroots level. Uh, but there's also uh, an adverse impact on, on the tournaments itself, on our events. Uh, for us, ensuring the success of uh, FIFA's iconic competitions, the FIFA World Cup in first place, is vital uh, you know, for FIFA to generate revenues that support the development of, of uh, football globally. Uh, and a smooth and uninterrupted tournament uh, schedule is, is key for us to uh, be able to allow participating teams fans and broadcasters and affiliates to, uh, to keep on doing their job. And yet an increased frequency of extreme weather events exposes uh, these match schedules to disruptions that can impact further uh, the course of the tournaments uh, significantly. And even in the upward uh, uh, trends of global average temperature, if, if, if we are able to stop it, the impacts on the earth physical environment will continue to happen because those changes have already been set in motion and because the greenhouse gas uh, that the greenhouse gases that have already been emitted into the atmosphere will take hundreds of years to be absorbed. So nevertheless, uh, and, and I hope to, to bring in a, a positive spin here, uh, it may not be too late to avoid uh, or limit uh, some of the worst effects of climate change uh, on sports if humanity stops its flow of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And that is why the International uh, Paris Agreement and the Sports for Climate Action framework in the field of sports were set up and are so important to us. So consequently, it is essential for FIFA and other football bodies to expand its existing efforts to reduce its organizations or their organizational emissions and help mitigate those of the world uh, of football and contribute to uh, the sports resilience if we want to be successful in the long run, uh, run if we want to have a, a, um, a safe planet and a safe uh, uh, sport, uh, we need to address uh, that resilience uh, uh, aspect of our sport uh, and as a matter of urgency. So what do fans expect from FIFA to deliver in regards to, uh, to sustainability or climate change? I think that they, they certainly expect us to, uh, to rise to the challenge. They, they expect us to take responsibility. They expect us to show leadership. Uh, we, uh, we are the federation and sports organization that uh, is responsible for the most popular game in the world, which is uh, very wealthy, which uh, organizes the largest single sport event on earth. And all of that comes, uh, as I said before, with a, with a, a big sense of responsibility. And, and we, ha we have, uh, uh, we believe to have taking that responsibility seriously. We have acknowledged that we have a responsibility to take, to protect the environment, to take, to make sure that, uh, uh, that we show leadership and demonstrate leadership in pushing uh, as well the sustainability agenda in the world of sports. Uh, our sustainability journey is one of the longest and most comprehensive in our sector and in the world of sports. And uh, we have achieved a lot in this field over the last two decades, I would say, but in particular over the last decade, but at the same time, um, there's still a long way to go. Uh, you will not hear me say that we are happy with the, 
where we are today. It's always, it's always more to be done. There's a long way before us. And we need to uh, recognize that there, there is, uh, our efforts need to become uh, more and more sustainable uh, if we want to achieve carbon neutrality uh, um, as, as we committed to as part of the uh, Sport for Climate Action uh, framework. Thank you, Federico. I have one interesting question from the audience that says, how do you think sports can inspire the local population to embrace sustainability, climate change? Can you give some example from previous tournaments? Well, we have a, a few examples where we, uh, we try to use the, uh, the, um, the platform of the World Cup uh, in, in some of the initiatives that we have to, um, to reduce our carbon footprint uh, which involves the uh, not just the fans but also the local population. So there have been a number. Uh, I can give you an example from Brazil, the World Cup in 2014, where uh, uh, reducing waste and, and segregating waste and recycling uh, 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 the largest part of the waste generated by the World Cup was a, a key a key way for us to uh, to uh, take responsibility of our, of our carbon emissions. And uh, as part of uh, an, an agreement with the, uh, the private sector, but also with the public sector in the country, we were able to mobilize and, and communicate around the importance of, uh, of uh, uh, proper waste management in the stadiums, which were aligned then in a much broader effort in the uh, whole cities of the World Cup, uh, which were un, uh, under the umbrella of a new uh, waste management law in the country of Brazil. So the World Cup is a, is a, a big amplifier, if you want, of, uh, of uh, measures that could uh, could lead to um, uh, a positive legacy uh, if they're done if they're done properly if they're done as we're doing in in Qatar uh, in coordination with the uh, local authorities um, we have uh, this opportunity as well of raising awareness about uh, the impact of uh, climate change among uh, fans so uh, in the previous two World Cups uh, we run a campaign uh, among ticket holders for them to understand that they had a responsibility every time they fly they, they were emitting, uh, uh, they were releasing uh, emissions into the atmosphere, and that there was a responsibility that we wanted to share with them and take take together responsibility for it by offsetting with them, and in some cases for them, uh, those emissions, and at the same time raising awareness about the topic. So there's a number of initiatives, and there will be more coming up uh, in uh, on the way to, uh, to 2022, uh, which we're very proud of and are going to be quite unique in terms of our, our collaboration with the, uh, with the Supreme Committee in, in Qatar. Thank you so much, Federico. Thank you. Moving to my next guest, uh, Abdel Hadi Al Merri, over to you. Thank you, Asha. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Um, uh, I will speak uh, from the government uh, you know, uh, regulator uh, perspective. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we'll start with the introduction for those who are not aware about uh, our uh, you know, terminologies in climate change. Of course, uh, climate change uh, as an issue, it is very complex. And this is uh, uh, the dilemma that we are facing uh, in the international negotiation that uh, um, it, it is a multidisciplinary uh, subject that has uh, different impacts, uh, whether uh, in human or economy or nature or environmental impacts. So uh, uh, it has uh, an environmental nature, but it is really uh, uh, having other impact or spillover impacts in other uh, uh, sectors like uh, economy and uh, human health and environment. If we can move to the next one, please. Uh, this is just uh, a brief about uh, what, we, what, is, uh, what are the main really components uh, that we have in climate change, which is uh, adaptation and mitigation. These are the actions that we can really respond to climate change uh, from uh, you know, different angles or different sectors. Uh, adaptation, in simple uh, words, it is uh, changing in processes or practices uh, to moderate potential damage or to benefit from the opportunities uh, associated with the climate change. And the mitigation is really very st straightforward. It is reducing emissions. Of course, well, we are always uh, you know, looking at CO2 as a famous one, but there are also other uh, sources of emissions like methane, nit nitrous oxide, and some others that contribute to the global warming. 
if we can move to the next one, please. Our uh, Qatar national circumstances, uh, as you are aware, uh, it is part of the issue for us to respond to climate change. Uh, we have uh, a desert environment uh, that is really harsh uh, in weather conditions, and uh, we have we are suffering from natural scar uh, scarcity and uh, depending uh, mostly in uh, desalinated water from sea. Uh, in terms of uh, our economical model, it is depending a lot on oil and gas resources, uh, and uh, you know most of the revenues uh, are uh, generated from this which is very important for the development of the country. Uh, at the same time, uh, protecting environment and uh, responding to climate change needs is also uh, important uh, in this area. Uh, the impact, impact of climate change actually in, in the land, are these are some examples, not really limited to, uh, but there are uh, models shows that uh, in, in, uh, uh, there are, it is ex expected to have uh, a flooding uh, of more than 10% uh, of the land by one meter of sea level rise. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, depending on uh, drinkable water from sea, uh, the reduced drinkable water is also at risk uh, from, uh, you know, uh, climate change impact in the sea or even in the, you know, the groundwater. Uh, the mitigation, uh, sorry, the migration of wildlife species. Uh, this is not only in Qatar, but uh, globally, there is a lot of migration uh, in uh, wildlife uh, because of the changes of the, uh, uh, like in the sea, the temperature or uh, the salinity and uh, all these parameters. So this is also uh, noticed uh, in the last uh, uh, few years. Uh, there are some studies locally also being done here. Uh, we can show uh, in other uh, events in uh, very specific areas. There is also the increase in temperature, the weather fluctuation. The next slide, please. Of course, uh, you know, to respond to climate change, uh, we are uh, drawing our actions actually from uh, very important principles. Uh, the main one is really the Qatar national vision that have specified specifically, especially, you know, specific words about climate change and respond to climate change, taking a lead in the, in the region and worldwide. Uh, there is also, uh, you know, the, you know the, the, the concentration of climate change issue within the environmental pillar, uh, pillar. Uh, to give it really the, the priority and the context of, of, in the environmental uh, initiatives. Uh, of course, uh, responding to climate change will have to be really done in a very sustainable manner uh, to strike the balance between our needs and development and also to protect the environment. Uh, there is also the support uh, of the international efforts uh, on climate change. Uh, I will mention an example that is uh, last year of His Highness Amir initiative uh, or pledge uh, to support uh, small countries, uh, small islands and uh, least developed countries with 100 million US dollar to support them to respond to climate change. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the country signed uh, an agreement with the uh, Green Growth, uh, Global Green Growth Institute uh, to be an executing uh, entity for this uh, fund. Of course, this fund is channeled through our uh, Qatar National Fund. Uh, uh, the other uh, important issue here also is, uh, you know, working with others in the, at the global level. Uh, as as you all aware, we have uh, the Paris Agreement 2015, and the main component really to to deal with the climate change in the international level is what is called uh, the nationally determined contributions. Uh, the countries have been, uh, all parties have been asked to really give their uh, uh, intended at that time, just before Paris, uh, two months uh, before almost uh, Paris, uh, to show their intended intended uh, uh, contributions they, they are uh, going to do in the last, in the next 10 years from 2020 uh, in terms of mitigation, adaptation, and all other uh, efforts. Qatar have submitted their report uh, and we are working now into developing our detailed one, uh, hopefully by the first quarter of uh, this year, 
uh, will be uh, working on it and maybe towards uh, submitting this next year. Uh, this is also a uh, part of the, you know, uh, national circumstances. Uh, uh, these are important, uh, you know, as we have said, all the pressure that we have in our environment and economy. Uh, these are the most important responses that we would like to see uh, in our uh, NDC, diversifying our economy, adapting to most, uh, you know, major impact like floods and water scarcity, high temperature, reducing our em uh, emissions uh, and effective also public participation or awareness and strengthening, uh, strengthening the governance uh, from this uh, platform that I'm working now with the environmental department in the environmental sector, uh, we have this newly, uh, you know, uh, developed uh, department, climate change department, and we are working in uh, the national MRV system, measuring, reporting, verification, which will really set the rules for uh, reporting the, uh, the emission and uh, efforts. Uh, hopefully, uh, by also, uh, we'll initiate the project uh, in the first quarter of next year. Uh, these also are some measures that has been done at the national level uh, in adaptation, uh, greening uh, and landscaping. This is a really very important and major uh, task in our ministry, but uh, also there is a new initiative uh, uh, of planting 1 million trees. We have reached already 250,000 uh, uh, since uh, launching this uh, two years ago. Uh, we are also protecting uh, a lot of areas. Um, 20 22% and now I just got the information today that it is reaching actually 29% of the Qatar's land uh, protected. We have done studies uh, for integrated, uh, integrated coastal zone management, part of our vision, uh, national vision. Uh, also, uh, there are recommendations to improve our infrastructure and uh, to also, um, uh, you know, deal with uh, any pressure in our uh, 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 assets uh, to protect it from uh, from uh, climate change impact. Uh, utilization of uh, wastewater, uh, treated wastewater, and of course the most important uh, link to uh, to link uh, the, the whatever uh, needs for the country with science. We are working with our uh, academia and uh, Qatar Foundation, Qatar University to uh, uh, work in R and D. Next, please. These some are some efforts of the country at, at the, in the mitigation area. I will be very, uh, I'll take it very summarized. Uh, actually, the major or the most famous one was the Shaheen project uh, that contributed to 40% of oil production. And uh, we are reducing uh, like 2.5 million per annum uh, tons of uh, CO2 uh, per year. Uh, in 2015, also we have the GBOG. Uh, it's, a, it's a gas flaring utilization also in Ras Lafan. It is also utilizing like uh, 1.6 million ton per annum. And of course, as my colleagues mentioned uh, from Kahrama, the Al Kharsa project uh, is also a very good example in the, in the renewable. And there are also efforts in QP also to, uh, to uh, use uh, what uh, the, actually the Ministry of Energy to use the uh, the, the renewable energy in our energy mix. Uh, the flare uh, reduction also uh, is a major contributor to, uh, to uh, emissions here. And uh, we are doing, uh, most uh, companies are doing like 20 to 90% reductions. Uh, and we are aiming for the zero flaring. Uh, for energy efficiency, there is a lot of also uh, projects underway in, 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 the, in the oil and gas uh, to reduce uh, and utilize uh, your resources in terms of uh, green growth uh, plans that we are also uh, putting in place at the moment. Environmental management programs also uh, is part of this to identify opportunities in green uh, uh, initiatives. Next one, please. Uh, this is actually just to link with the international discussion in the climate change. Uh, we are the, the ministry, we are the focal point for the UNFCC, the United Nations Framework on Climate Change. As I said, uh, 2015, we have the latest agreement, uh, Paris Agreement, and part of Paris Agreement, uh, this NDC is a major vehicle to really uh, uh, give the momentum to, to countries to make actions. 
uh, two thirds of these, uh, and this is are depending on carbon pricing, which is really uh, part of our discussion today about carbon and carbon neutralization. Uh, under Paris, there are articles that regulate, uh, you know, the new market, if I may say, or the new mechanism. Uh, more important of them are uh, really 6.4, which is the mechanism uh, for emission uh, crediting. Uh, but also there is uh, 6.2 to establish the potential for trading uh, between countries across borders. And uh, also the 6.5 to put the rules for uh, MRV and measuring and reporting uh, of this uh, 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 credit uh, or uh, efforts in, in carbon. Uh, I try to be really summarized. I would like to have, uh, uh, I would be happy to really receive questions and any uh, topics and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Abdel Hadi. So my question to you is, what are the main actions Qatar is taking to reach objectives of uh, Paris Agreement? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, you know, the, the NDC is, is the most important component and from all, all parties to respond to, to the Paris Agreement. And uh, we have submitted uh, uh, really uh, more general NDC uh, in 2015, just before the COP as other parties. But now we are working into uh, elaborating into the different sectors of the, our NDC. Our NDC is centralized around uh, economic diversification, uh, which is really uh, recognized also by the Paris Agreement agreement and it was part of the legacy that we had in cup 18 uh, we have uh, this is 23 cp 18 uh, was establishing the uh, economic diversification as one of the important tools to respond to uh, climate change as we are depending heavily on oil and gas we would like to diversify our economy into different sector, uh, sectors in order to reduce uh, the footprint or reduce our emission from oil and gas um, so uh, the, the most important is really developing our NDC into goals and numbers uh, to be achieved uh, in the next uh, 10 years. So uh, this project is underway. Uh, hopefully by end of uh, first quarter next year, we will have our updated NDC. Perfect. Uh, so I'm looking at uh, some of the questions from the audience. Um, so uh, I'll be asking questions uh, across my guests. So Abdel Hadi, continuing with you, what is Qatar's set target as part of the Paris Agreement to reduce the uh, GHG emissions? What is uh, your target said, on that? Yeah. Yes, as I have said, we don't have really at the moment. Uh, actually, I need to say something before we reach uh, this point. Uh, you know, the, before I explain, uh, mm -hmm. if you give me some time, Asha, I'm sorry to uh, you know this would need another session really to talk about uh, climate change and FCC. Uh, but actually, uh, moving from Kyoto, uh, which was really top-down kind of uh, policy that has numbers, uh, targets for only uh, the Annex One country, which is the, the developed countries, if I may say. In Paris, we have all countries need to contribute by reductions. Uh, of course, uh, developing countries like uh, you know non-Annex countries like Qatar they are eligible for also support, but we are doing from our side also, as the country want to take the lead, uh, to have, uh, we are spending, uh, you know, from uh, from our, uh, you know, budget to reduce emissions. Uh, so mm -hmm. this uh, targets need to be really designed in a very careful way to uh, to uh, to strike the balance between the economy and the, and the and the environment, but this is, uh, as I said, part of the NDC. There is no numbers as a goal now, okay. but we are mm -hmm. moving uh, towards this uh, by next year, uh, announcing our uh, numerical kind of targets. Okay. Thank you, Abdel Hadi. Going back to Miriam and uh, Siraj project, uh, my question is, is there any energy storage included in this project, Miriam? Um, uh, no, there is no storage uh, technology included in Siraj 1, and this is mainly due to the fact that uh, storage technology is still not economically feasible and will increase the project cost. Uh, storage technology is also evolving, uh, same as the um, uh, PV market, and once proved cost effectiveness, uh, we might go for it. We can go for it at any time uh, later. Okay, perfect. Uh, I have one more question also for... Uh... 
Let's see the questions here. Okay. For Federico, which methodology is used to calculate the carbon footprint of a typical FIFA World Cup? Federico. Well, the, uh, the methodology is, uh, is uh, quite, it's based on, on the greenhouse gas protocol and the methodology is quite complex. Uh, I've, I can combine this with another question that was asked uh, elsewhere in the, in the chat, which was about uh, how, uh, how are we including as part of that methodology the, uh, the emissions from, uh, from fans, from, uh, from uh, spectators, from commercial affiliates and, and everyone else involved in the, in the event. Yes, everything is involved. Uh, or is, is, is uh, counted in uh, as part of this methodology. We're going to publish the, uh, we expect publishing the report in the month of uh, January, uh, around January, hopefully uh, in, uh, in uh, 2021. So in a couple of months from now, uh, and that uh, uh, will include as well the, uh, the entire methodology of the, uh, uh, that we used for, for, for that. So we'll be happy to share as well with this group uh, that, uh, that publication and, and all the details about the methodology. There's also a question about the, uh, uh, the inclusion of the uh, construction emissions that we have done as well, uh, a full uh, life cycle assessment of carbon emissions for the uh, stadiums from design to uh, the end of life, uh, 60 years after construction. Uh, so we have definitely considered all of that and there will be as well a publication of those life cycle emissions uh, in the new year. Thank you, Federico. Now, now I have a couple of questions uh, for uh, across my panelists for our four uh, last minutes, uh, considering the time. So uh, I'll ask the question, I'll go with the same sequence we started. With climate change as an imminent uh, threat, what do you think need to happen in the short term? Uh, starting with Bedur. Sorry, I was muted. Okay. Can you repeat the question, Asha, please? So with climate change as an imminent threat, what do you think need to happen in the short term? Uh, we need uh, to work. Uh, I think we should start from ourselves. We need to uh, 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 reduce the uh, usage of our uh, uh, electricity and the water to reduce uh, the energy consumed by that. And that would be a personal advice, would you say? What would you advise? Yeah, like I think we attendees? should start yeah. from, yeah. Yes. We should start, yeah. Yes, perfect. Maria, what would you think is the uh, imminent threat and uh, what should happen in the short term? And if you have any uh, personal advice for our attendees on their personal or pro uh, professional life? Yeah, I think <clears throat> uh, limiting the use of the fossil fuels and replacing them with uh, renewable sources, I think this is number one goal and major emission contributor. Mm -hmm. uh, we are lucky that renew renewables are becoming uh, cheaper and cheaper and more uh, cost effective across the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's it's very sad that after years of discussion on climate change and mitigation, still coal is the num dominator of the primary uh, fuel in the world. And uh, regarding my advice, I think uh, if someone like at professional level can do uh, initiatives, this is great. But if not, uh, there are a lot of uh, choices uh, can be done at a personal level, whether at cost or free at co or free of cost. Uh, sometimes, like including myself, I feel that uh, the the issue is so massive, and we lose uh, hope that our contribution might not uh, make a difference. Uh, but I think everybody contribution is needed, and uh, uh, everybody should change. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Maria and Federico. Well, I think that the, uh, I, 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 mean, I would not like to provide advice to anybody. There's a number of uh, very uh, capable professionals listening to us, but I think the, uh, the advice is, is the same that we, we give to, to ourselves and, uh, and seeing this, uh, this emergency, there is, there is no excuse anymore. We understand what the problem is. Uh, it's just a matter of taking, uh, using the political will uh, at, at everyone's level, for us in the world of sports and the world of football, we need to acknowledge uh, that responsibility and, and use the power that we have uh, in order to uh, apply the mechanisms that, uh, that we know exist there in order to address this, uh, this, uh, uh, this challenge, uh, which is a, a serious emergency for our planet. Therefore, for everyone to take responsibility, uh, acknowledge responsibility, take responsibility, adopt the mechanisms that are existing uh, yeah, in order for us to, uh, to uh, cope with this, with this uh, true uh, global emergency. Thank you, Federico. Abdelhadi? 
Yes, uh, thank you. Can I, uh, can I just repeat the question again? I'm just, uh, so, uh, what, what do you think needs to happen in the short term? And if you would like to share, uh, uh, give advice, personal advice for uh, personal or professional life for our attendees on uh, action to take for climate change? Well, actually, um, it's part of this, uh, you know, world, uh, you know, activities. Uh, in the future, we are hoping that the momentum for climate change uh, will be much better. We have the slowdown because of the pandemic, but I think uh, the, the cup next year in UK should be really very important uh, because uh, last year uh, we were supposed to do something in Article 6 uh, in order to, to uh, really move forward. Article 6 is the one uh, responsible about uh, carbon management and the mechanism really for greenhouse gases. Uh, so I think uh, hopefully by next year we'll, we'll have some kind of movement in this. Uh, at the national level, uh, there is a lot of uh, you know activities. Uh, we would like to really to have all of them together into one uh, really one vehicle. Uh, I, I don't have really very specific advice, but uh, I think uh, uh, we are here really as a governmental agency to listen to everyone and uh, to put uh, you know all the concerns of everyone here because uh, the, the efforts and the, the, and the actions will be done from different players at the national level. Um, this is part of our religion also that uh, we also keep uh, uh, environment safe and reduce also the usage of many resources that we have been blessed with. Uh, I think um, that's it for the moment and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Abdel Hadi. Thank you, dear guests, for your valuable input and efforts on achieving carbon neutrality. And thank you everyone for attending and joining the session today. For further details on sustainability, please visit qatar2022.qa sustainability. And goodbye.